Hey, what's up, everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're going to try and speed run this question on Reddit. How do you model this part? So here we go. In SolidWorks, begin a new document. Choose millimeters as your units. We're going to go top plane. We're going to begin a sketch. So S key, begin a sketch. S key, circle. Let's make some circles here. I'm going to make the OD 100, but I'm going to add an additional 20 for that kind of rectangular area. And I'm going to make the ID here 25. I'm going to sketch in that rectangular area, and we're going to use this a little bit later in our design. So we'll take some geometry here. Whoops. I always get caught up with that in SolidWorks. Create some geometry here, like so. Make that one for construction. Take all this and mirror it. Ugh. Take all this and mirror it. I'm in instant 3D, so I got kicked out of my sketch when I double-clicked in the background. And let's make this uh, 50 wide in the back, and we'll make that 100 from the front of the part. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to end up using that geometry here uh, with, with this arc here, but we're not going to use it for this first sketch. So we're just going to kind of lay it out, and then we'll come back and use that a little bit later as convert geometry. So all it really is is a diameter uh, 120 and a diameter 25. S key extrude, and we're going to bring that up to a height of 40 millimeters for zero. And now we're going to start creating the layout for our teeth. Now to create all these little teeth here, because you're going to have teeth that go like here and here and here, all these teeth that go all the way around this thing, to create all these teeth, we're going to create an equation tools equations tools equations and then we'll call this equation here number of teeth we'll make that something like 40 and okay all right now this surface up top here begin a sketch get normal two, and then create an angle that starts at the origin that goes across this edge here and then drop in a point and make that point coincident to that edge, okay? And then it ends up on this edge out here. Starts at the origin, goes across this arc, obviously. Uh, ends up down here, put a point right here like so, and then create a center line, and then use that center line to do a mirror. Now, I've got mirror here in this customized menu, so as soon as I select those entities, you can choose mirror, or you could choose it up here on your sketching toolbar. Either way, mirror. Okay, so now you mirrored that point and you mirrored that that uh, that point and that line. So now add a dimension, so S key dimension, and the angle for this dimension is going to be 360 divided by, and then you're going to type um, uh, equals down over enter. So 360 divided by the global variable for the number of teeth. So you go enter there, and whoops, uh, let's see here, just get rid of that equals. I should take care of it. There we go. So number of teeth, I just use equals to kind of trigger that access to that global variable, but then you have to get rid of equals because it's not divided by equals, it's divided by the number of teeth. So you press enter, that updates, updates it to nine degrees, you press enter again, and there we go. Now you've got your angle there, and that angle actually should be a dimension. Hold on, let me type equals first. Equals 360 divided by, hmm, maybe equals, see I want it to be linked still, number of teeth and then come back here and then do 360 slash number of teeth. Okay, there we go. That's what we wanted. I wasn't seeing the, the equation there. So you want that to maybe type equals first and then get number of teeth in there and then type 360 over, whatever. Regardless, it's gotta be, it's gotta have that little equation sign so you can change the number of teeth if you want more or less teeth. Okay, so we got our angled lines, we got our points here, we got our opening down here and exit that sketch. And now we're going to create a new sketch plane. So you go here, front plane in the tree, hold control, drag this plane down like so, and then click on one of these points that you made and press enter. And then after you have that, or I guess click the green check mark, and then after you have that, do the same thing. So front plane, hold control, drag this plane down, click on this point here, enter, or right click or click the green check mark, whatever. So now you've got a loft profile plane here and a loft profile plane here. So now all you gotta do is draw some triangles using these points as references. So we take this plane here, begin a sketch and sketch a line that comes down like this, a line that comes back up to this point here. Hit escape, pick one, hold control, pick the other, make them equal. Close this thing off with another line up top here and add in a dimension for the depth of your tooth at that location. So we make this depth here at say three millimeters. So you'll notice here that that sketch, because it was sketched uh, not tangent to, 
but like slightly inside, there's going to be a slight gap here. Graphically, it's not showing, but the you can kind of see it here at the at the peak. Um, but there's a slight gap, so like the arc really comes around like this, and that means that when you do that cut, it's going to cut all the way through that inside wall. Very important for this application. So now we're going to repeat those steps out here on this plane out here. Now, of course, you want to rename your planes and everything along the way. So this would be like plane loft profile one. This one would be like plane. Really, you probably call it like um, loft profile outer. This one you'd call loft profile inner something like that and then this would be like a angle layout and this one would be loft profile one or loft profile inner and now this one's going to be loft profile outer so you always want to rename your sketches especially when you're lofting because when you loft a lot of times you're using several different sketches and planes together so create that triangle pick this one hold control pick this one make those equal add in your dimension that goes from here down to here now this one is going to be slightly on the inside of that wall so that phenomenon we talked about a moment ago is going to be a little different here the arc of the wall is going to go here and this sketch is going to be on the inside that's okay you'll see why that's okay in just a minute so now we're going to take those two loft profiles so here i'll click on this press f2 control c go to this one control v and then just rename this to outer now we're going to go to those two loft profiles and we're going to use this command lofted cut lofted cut to connect those two so we go from here out to here and we're going to hit the green check mark to lofted cut that and you can see that that cuts that groove but it doesn't cut the outer wall because we have that little bit of extra shape it cuts the inner wall just fine but it doesn't cut that outer wall because we have that extra little bit of shape and we knew that was going to happen and that is okay we remember when we made our original sketch we kind of planned to have a little bit of extra so this actually is good it's actually going to help us out here in just a minute so now what we can do is we can choose to take that geometry and we can choose to pattern it so we're going to go here to circular pattern and the arc of the pattern will be this arc down here the the edge of the part so i have the sketch shown i think it's causing a hiccup there so circular pattern then the arc will be this edge here and then the features to pattern will be this and then the number of instances in the pattern here is probably like three right now the number of instances will be equal down over enter so equals the number of teeth enter and enter to finish off that pattern so the reason that you do that is because that will help you ensure that the where the the slope comes up from the tooth hits right at the peak and then goes down and then comes up and hits right at the peak and then comes down that's why you want to do it that way otherwise you're going to be guessing like uh you know you're gonna have like a little flat spot at the top or a little flat spot at the bottom if your goal is to have it exactly hit at that peak do it with an equation do it with an angle here to kind of guide the loft you don't have to use these as guide curves because like it's a very um analytical solve so it's not like it's like going around curves and you got to pull it into those curves it's only two profiles and they're both triangular so you don't have to use this as a guide curve you could if you wanted to but you can see in these results you don't really need to so i'm going to hide that angle layout okay we'll call this one a uh, single tooth cut this will be called the uh, tooth circ pattern all right, and now we are ready to add in the final touches to kind of finish this thing off. So those final touches are going to look something like uh, top plane, begin a sketch, show the original sketch one, look at this thing from the top here, and we'll take this curve or this line, this line, this line, and this curve, and we'll say convert entities. And then we're going to do a trim to trim off that middle part. And then we're going to do features, extrude cut. And when you do an extrude cut, you can say flip side to cut, and that'll cut away everything on the outside of the sketch instead of the inside. So we'll say flip side to cut. Cut, and we'll say this is going to go through all and it's going to go in the up direction and there you go you can see you're cutting away everything that is outside of that sketch instead of everything that is inside of that sketch and so now you can finish this thing off by going top plane begin a sketch take this curve the larger circle let me go to the top view so you can see this this curve here which is a larger circle this line this line and this line and convert entities and you don't even have to trim it this time because now when you go into extrude what you can do is you can go to selected contours and pick this contour here and then you can say you want that to go up to vertex and the vertex is going to be this vertex right here okay and then we hit the green check mark and boom there you go there is that part looks pretty similar i think it looks pretty similar let's see if we make it perspective and maybe like change the color to kind of match that blue yeah that's pretty close so there's the challenge on reddit 
And there is your final model in SolidWorks. I hope that helps. If it does, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. And if you want to get more practice going from 2D to 3D, so anytime you see something, anytime you see a picture of something, you'll know how to model up that part. Visit us at TwoTallToby.com. That is where you can sign up for an account and unlock 220 practice models challenges, practice modeling real world parts using any 3D CAD system. All right, everybody. Hope you like this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.